We are back on Inside Politics. Our guest today is Democratic gubernatorial candidate Carl Dean. Uh, Mayor Dean, um, your campaign with Bill Lee has certainly been much more cordial, should we say, than compared to what we've seen, particularly in the TV ads going on in the, in the senatorial side. Right. Why, why is that? Are you just two nice guys? <laughs> Well, I, I do think maybe we have a similarity in that I don't think either of us thinks a personal attacks is the way to go. And, you know, as I said, I think it's incumbent on both of us to do comparative conversations about why we're different and help educate the public. But, you know, maybe the difference is that it hasn't had the, the national attention or the outside money pouring in that, that creates some of that. But it has been, I think, um, uh, you know, I think we've treated each other respectfully, and I think that's the way I, I want to do things. Obviously, a race where you're running with a person who has been an incumbent in the state for eight years gives him a name recognition and maybe goes to a closer race than what you've had in this race with two candidates still trying to be known to the public. Right. Was there talk about any joint campaign efforts between you and Governor Bredesen to sort of perhaps help get your name recognition out there a little better? Was, was that something you'd have liked to have seen done? No, I mean, I'm happy with the way we've approached Approach it. We did the consolidated campaign where we're doing lots of things uh, together in terms of people working on get out the vote or canvassing phone calls uh, as a joint effort to help save costs. And There's also a lot of talk, at least in Mr. Lee's last uh, ad about schools, that he would like to see every student have to take some kind of technical course, whether it's coding or whether it's ag or whether it's shop. Uh, Obviously, I think you have an interest in having more technical education within the schools, but for every student all across the state, is that, is that more than you think we need to address this problem? Yeah, probably. I think we got to have, I think it's more about availability and letting students have choices. Um, I think it's important to have vocational ed available for it and, and have information that will help kids in high school make decisions about which route they want to take. And we need to recognize that not everyone will go to college and people will make decisions. And we have technical then community colleges and other things to, as they want to pursue further, um, further information. But um, I don't think we need to mandate that people, everybody take shop or take a, get a technical uh, course. Um, you know, I, actually, I, I had, when I was growing up, I, we had a lot of vocational stuff in my, the schools I went to, and we had shop mandated, and everything I worked on in shop turned out to be a little bookcase. I tried to do big things, but everything ended up being a bookcase because I was never very good at it. You still got one? I still got some, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but, but I, do, I do think that having choices and letting students know that they don't have to go to college necessarily and that vocational ed is a, is a good thing and, and steering them on a path where they can get good jobs is key. Staying in the area of uh, K-12 education, uh, the 10 Ready program to test students' uh, achievements and also to test the effectiveness of teachers has not worked very well, particularly in the online basis here. The governor this week uh, came out with a, a plan to fix that. I have a chance, you've, I'm sure you had a chance to look at it. Do you support doing that and do you really have any other choice? Because by the time you get in to be governor, you'll be well into January and the tests start in the spring. Well, I think, I think that the next governor is going to have to look at this and make their own decisions about what they're going to do. I mean, I certainly respect and believe that Governor Haslam's done everything he can, and I, and I respect the, the recommendations. But, you know, I think where we need to be on testing is we need to have a system that is both respectful to teachers in terms of be, in its creation, that we hear their voices to get it done, that we listen to school superintendents and principals, and that it's not seen as a punitive thing, that it's something that's for professional development, helps teachers do a better job, and helps students get the, the the attention they need and you know those are the things I'm going to be looking for and I think I think where we are now given as you mentioned the failures of the last few years the next governor has to come in with an open mind and say we're going to look at this and see do what's right for Tennessee and it may be something different you mentioned community colleges a minute ago governor Haslam in the last couple of days has said that the graduation rates for community colleges is still embarrassing right that's after he had the Tennessee promise program to give free tuition for two years are we spending money there that we should be spending on remedial education so these students are ready to to graduate when they get through with two years? Well, I college? think that's an you know, argument people will make, but I do think Governor Haslam ought to be very proud of the Tennessee Promise. I, I support it and did support it when it, it started, and we did it actually a year early here in Nashville. Um, that's a great program long term for our state, and, and we have to work through the issues around graduation rates. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm committed to the Tennessee Promise. The Supreme Court has made rulings in the last year that would allow sports gambling to be legal in Tennessee and all states would also allow online um, um, purchases to be taxed. Uh, we've already got an existing law about that. Do you think we ought to move in those two directions? They could be quite lucrative for the state. 
Well, I think for online purchases, I think it's this levels the playing field. I, you know, right now, uh, Brooks, uh, you know, stores are are being penalized versus online sales, and that's that's not fair. And there would be additional revenue for the state, which would be a good thing. In terms of sports gambling, you know, I'm not a big advocate for it, but you know, we're going to do it. I mean, you know, it seems to be like the lottery. Every state around us is going to do it, and we're going to get there. But we. But that is something we should not fall behind on. Is it legal in our Constitution? Because right now the only thing that we can do for gambling is the lottery. So we've got to change the Constitution to let sports, ladder, sports yeah. gambling be a part of that or make it well, part I of Well, I mean, that'll be up to the Attorney General and the courts to decide. But um, I do think it's like the lottery where, you know, we waited till the very last minute to do it when everybody else is doing it and lost revenue for years. So um, if, if we do those things and we get that extra stuff, are we going to be, are you, no, won't need to raise sales tax for at least a full term? Well, that's a lot of ifs, but, uh, you know, my goal would be not to raise sales tax. Our sales tax is already so high that I think it's, you know, raising it any further is going to have diminishing returns in, in many in many. Carl Dean, thanks for coming in. I know you're thank going you. everywhere these last couple of days, and uh, good luck to you on Election Day. Okay. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining us on Inside Politics. Hope you'll be back here again for a future show. If you can't get up politics in the meantime, go to Loose Channel 5 website. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. The new commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you back here next time. Goodbye. Thank you.